What's up, Gareth? <laughs> How you, my man? How's it going, brother? Yes, I'm excited for today's chat. Yeah, me as well, bad. Very excited. So, hello, YouTube. Uh, today, we're talking to a guy, Devin Lester. He is a longtime friend of mine, and he's a serious unsung hero with the story I think many of us can resonate with. Hey, Craig. Yes, this guy has gone from like this high paying job and high pressure to total entrepreneur in the field of photography. And he gives us so many amazing steps on how to do that yourself. Really, really great chat. Yeah, cool. So, well, we hope you enjoy the chats and we hope you enjoy our new YouTube intros. Woo! Ooh. And uh, <laughs> enjoy this chat with Devin. Cool. Interview, Thank bud. Like you yeah, going like, you like, there we go. Hey, there he is, the turtle. Hey, you can't hear us. <laughs> How's it going, bud? Can you hear us? us can you hear? Can we can't hear you? Can you hear us? <laughs> it's called a computer. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yes, I agree. What? How's it going, man? <laughs> so, so, what do I need? Do I need earphones or what? Yeah, you do, please, bud. Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> We are live already though, hey? This is on Facebook again. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Lekker, man. Thanks for coming on. We're excited to chat to you. Cool, yeah, me too. I'm, well, I'm nervous, but... Uh, I don't know why you're nervous. I guess no, maybe it is nerve-wracking, I guess. Like, it's like yeah, nerve-wracking, man. Yeah, yeah. But the cool thing is, but look, it's literally just us having a chat about you and, you know, your life. <laughs> <laughs> But not good though, man. Gonna help, but. Hey, cool, cool. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm going to have my wrinkly and all that. Yes, it's bad. Tell us. All, all, all right. of us, but. Yeah, I'm bad. Waking at dawn. Back. Cool stuff. Well, good morning there, Devin Lester. Long the time, time, buddy. Thank you so much for joining us on the Ridiculously Human podcast. How's it going, my man? Yeah, we're very lucky. Glad to be here. But a uh, bit daunting, but uh, <laughs> very, uh, very glad to be invited. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. It's going to be so, good. Yeah, it's going to be good, man. So how's, uh, how's your day going anyway? It's Monday morning, I guess. Is it a busy one for you? Uh, yeah, there's always, um, always lots to do. Eh? I think even if it's been a bit of a quiet patch, there's always... There's always something to get going, but yeah, Monday takes on a bit of a new meeting when it's um, when you're not schlepping to the office. So, so yeah, what, can't complain. What do you mean by that? Does it does it mean you've you've got like a checklist for when you wake up, or you re like you've got yourself ready to rock and roll with X, Y, Z, or do you kind of just see how where the day takes you? Uh, no, there's definitely definitely generally like you know things to deliver on or stuff to send off or check that's come back. So yeah, there's it's never really a, a quiet moment. It's been it's been busy, which is good. Can't complain. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's nice to be busy. It's a privilege, actually. Like, yeah, you're not, you're not clock watching necessarily because you want to get out of there. You know, you're like clock watching because there's not enough time, which is quite quite <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, there seriously aren't enough hours in the day. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool, man, Devin. Look, I mean, you and I go back so many years now. You know, we're great buddies, and uh, we have lots of cool little stories and moments and stuff, you know, that we could talk about, I guess, like forever and would probably only be funny to you and me and <laughs> some of our mates. Uh, so we'll maybe try like not get stuck into too much of that. Although there are one or two stories, which I think are hilarious and worth talking <laughs> along the way. <laughs> That's a bit, uh, bit nervous, nerve wracking. Yeah. But um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool, man. So Devin, I guess I've always known you to be, like a very disciplined and professional guy, right? Like ever since we kind of met in high school, uh, it's always been a trait of yours. And early on in your life, you started karate because your old man was actually a karate teacher. And yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you feel like that kind of influenced you in your life in terms of, you know, your discipline and your way of approaching things? Look, I think, um, I think it definitely made a, had a role to play. I mean, we started when we were, I was, I think, seven years old. And um, my dad had started up his, his own dojo, well, closer to home. And he had another one in town. And, you know, it was like our, our two to three time a week thing. And, you know, you went, whether you really felt like it or not, and you entered competitions, whether you knew you were going to win or not. And, 
you know, there's kind of about, yeah, I suppose it does instill in you a bit of, a bit of discipline and hard work and pushing yourself and, and uh, definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah. Cause and like, then, I mean, yeah, you go, Craig. Hey. Carry on, carry on. No, just remember like, you know, you would have this sort of extramural activity, you know, to go to after all your school stuff, you would then have to go to karate and, you know, just add, like added that extra amount of sort of time to your day. So yeah, you know, it, it, it was, it was like a big commitment, but um, you know, it seemed like it added a lot to your life. Yeah. And, and we also then, you know, later on got involved with helping teach the younger guys. And so that even, you know, then it added to the, added to the time involved and, um, but it was, it was always great. Like, you know, it was, it was something that I definitely enjoyed doing and, you know, just also, you know, you really get to use your body, your whole, the whole of your body and, and, um, it's great fitness and, and certainly, uh, you know, there's those, the five, five principles that they instill in you. So it was, I think it's really great for all kids to get involved in from a, from a sort of, uh, what's the word, emotional and physical, um, benefits. Yeah. Yeah. So you were a little bit like coerced into going, but, but, but at the same time you did actually enjoy it. And like, how did yeah. you, yeah, how so did, did, you, did you feel it was beneficial at the time? I definitely enjoyed it at the time. And I think it was, like I said, it was, it was good fitness. Um, and, and I think it was something, yeah, it was something I really enjoyed. Like my sister and myself both did it, you know, right through. She actually carried on after I'd, I'd had to give it up. Um, but just uh, a great a great kind of distraction or what do you call it like great way to take your mind off things you can't really focus on your the problems or stresses of your day when you're trying to do a cart or you've got punches flying at your face <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was, it was always uh, always something we enjoyed eh? and you talk about the five um elements or disciplines what actually are they uh, we always used to recite them, you know, after class or something, my dad would get everyone to, you know, check your memory or whatever it was. So it was uh, character, sincerity, effort, etiquette, and self-control. And um, mm -hmm. so it was something you'd, they'd sort of chant through and you'd, you'd uh, I suppose, I don't know how much it sort of filters through into your daily life. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a, a great thing to have been involved in. And um, I know a lot, a lot of, my dad's students actually get referred from um, what are they called? Like uh, yeah, occupational therapists and that sort of thing. Like, cause mm. it, it, re it really is such a great thing for kids to, to get involved in. Huh. Now so those cool. elements were those things that are like instilled or, or sort of part of karate in general or those sort of his uh, in his dojo or whatever his, in his classes were those his, uh, uh People. Yeah, I know what you're saying. No, so it's definitely it's part of the it's his the, the style they practice is um, JKA or Japan Karate Association. So I think it's it comes through from the from the association, and um, I think he added a sixth one. But don't ask me what that was. <laughs> I can't remember. But um, but yeah, the the five sort of it's like a uh, organization wide uh, wow. set of principles. Yeah. And your old man, he was uh, pretty decent at it, wasn't he? Like. Got well, he's, he's, oh, he still is, is he? He's yeah, still, no, he's still, he's still training. Um, he's now seventh Dan. He's been graded by <laughs> like, the top Japanese guys. So it's not a, it's not something that many people reach or, or attain. So yeah, it's, it's quite an achievement and to still be training after a hip, hip replacement and, and that sort of thing is, <laughs> is crazy. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What, what, what is seventh Dan? Like, what does that actually mean in terms of like, how long it takes or, or how does someone get yeah. to that stage? Yeah, it's, it's quite, it's quite a, a lifelong sort of investment really, because you, your first Dan in, in our, in our style anyway, your, your first Dan, you can only get from a certain age, I think it was 16 or something like that. And then to get your second Dan, you wait two years to get your third Dan. So the Dan's are your black belts. Um, so for each, for each subsequent, um, grading you'd be waiting longer and longer and having to know obviously more more work and and also uh you know you start to they want they want theses theses from you um so yeah you know, by the time you know you're getting to sixth seventh eighth dan and you've really you know put in a number of years and they start looking at your contribution to the association and to the hmm. you know karate as a whole so it's it's not something that's just uh you know something you think you're going to reach in a in a couple of in a couple yeah. of years or something 
Mm. And, and the, the sort of limit is 10, is that right? So does it get I don't, higher than no, that? I don't, I don't think there's necessarily a limit. It, it, you, can, you can keep training and, and, you know, I suppose they'll just assess you on different criteria when you're a bit old and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> not, maybe not as fit as you once were, but they sort of take that into account, yeah. Uh, that's wow. become, it becomes more about your contribution to to the association yeah yeah for sure and, and the uh, kid in me wants to know if he's kind of like badass you know like <laughs> can, can he kick your ass kind of thing <laughs> i'm sure i'm i'm sure yeah it's also about uh like like the, the self-control thing i think it's not uh not being what's the word not aggressive about it. yeah i'm not being aggressive not bragging about it but uh, i don't yeah, think you're ever worried yeah because i i mean i would, I always remember like you never ever sort of took it out. Like you like it's not like you ever got in a fight and you like took an oak out with your karate. It wasn't it wasn't you know, it just wasn't it wasn't just, avoid, just avoided the fight. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but, yeah, but, but um, it, it is about self more about self defense though, isn't it? Than actually yeah. using it. Yeah, no, exactly. And um yeah, unfortunately, you know it it is kind of a, a big time investment and in, and you know we were part of part of uh getting through varsity i was away from home and then and then getting back here and trying to pick it up again and then you know then the kids start arriving and it just kind of became something that i had to uh, you know something I had to give so yeah. uh, fortunately it was the karate yeah so okay cool man so like <laughs> <looking> at, <laughs> um, <laughs> at, um no no not at all no 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 like look at school you were always super smart right you were meticulous in what you with the way you were the way you worked um and you always like you were one of the sort of smartest guys in school and um someone i always looked up to you know for for those reasons and for other reasons but did you kind of have any idea what you wanted to be when you were growing up um no not really you know i think we all went through that phase where everyone wanted to be a marine biologist or something like that <laughs> like i don't know i don't think anyone actually went on to do that but um no i remember i remember like I, yeah I certainly i didn't for me i was really lucky i didn't find school to be a drag or, or i just really enjoyed it eh? and um and i suppose things did come quite easily it's just i suppose uh, nothing nothing seemed to be too much of a, a bore or it was just something i would find it found very interesting and then but then yeah when the choice came like what are you going to study it was it was really difficult it felt like i don't know what i want to do for the rest of my life like you know you're in grade what was it standard eight or something like or grade seven or no what grade nine or ten and you have to make this big decision and you know you went for like some psychoanalytical tests and they're like oh you could do medicine or and i was like no i can't stand the side of blood so i'm not going to be doing that and <laughs> do engineering or you could do this or that or other and, and then you know this actuarial science idea gets gets uh points in your direction uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time and chatted to a friend of my dad who was an actuary and, and i said oh, okay well you like maths it kind of seems like the the right road for you and and went down that road yeah so um but definitely didn't know that that was the answer. It just seemed like the the next best thing, you know. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what an actuary is? I can try. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so actuaries are involved in uh, sort of projecting uncertainties, like into the future. So most actuaries work in an insurance field or insurance background. So life insurance, short term insurance. Um, in the end, I worked in reinsurance. And so there's lots of variables involved, you know, in projecting things forward, you know, whether it's people's lives or chance of accidents happening. And that's where actuaries get involved with some fancy maths and assumptions and statistics um, to try and, you know, provide the best guess or the best estimates at like, you know, what, what might happen. Um, and then making sort of financial sense of that. So you know, I ended up in a, just happens to end up in a life insurance environment and, um, and then eventually a reinsurance environment. So yeah, it was, it was something that I definitely, I, I enjoyed it. And I also had a sort of a computer side that I was involved in like financial modeling and, and that sort of, you know, computer programming element was something I enjoyed as well. So yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very, a very brief, a very brief summary of, uh, of what actuaries do. I think it's a, quite a, a misunderstood profession in general really for sure 
Thanks. All that went way over Craig's head. He's like, you heard you know, so I'm, I'm sitting here going like, I still don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so funny. Yeah, Craig, Craig's like, you know, you know, Zoom is saying numbers. Like it's, that's fun of Craig sometimes. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> he, he said, he said the word statistic and I was like, oh, yeah. it's gone. But I'm really yeah, like, I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. No, one year after the other year. Yeah, no, but like it's, it's actually, it's, a, it's, it's really interesting that, there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects to it so you might you might go into it with a certain idea of what you end up doing but it's very um you know you learn a lot of uh techniques and subject matter in in quality or you know in reaching you know getting to university and maybe during your studies while you're working and uh so it certainly equips you to get into a lot of different roles within that sphere so you know like i like i said there's apart from the life insurance and the health insurance and medical aids and, and that sort of thing, there's all these wider fields that guys are getting involved in now, like the banking industry, um, even like, you know, like employee, uh, what's it called, like customer award programs, anything where there's like, you know, what are the chances that clients are going to do this or that? And if they do that, then what happens? Uh, what's mm. the financial impact on our side? So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's broadening its scope. So it's, yeah, it's certainly something that, um, you know, I definitely enjoy doing and, and, you know, we, I worked in some great companies and, and met some great people. So. Yeah. I can imagine now with like the, all the new data and availability of data, it's kind of just becoming a, a bigger sort of um, a bigger role even, you know, because you guys like you have an idea of how to analyze things. So it's uh, probably something that's only going to become bigger with uh, all the, you know, change in technology definitely, and stuff yeah. now. Um, yeah, like the, yeah. I remember the big buzzwords, you know, every time, every year they'd have a convention and guys would be talking about big data and, and it was a whole, a whole new speciality that, that people were moving into. It's almost like, you know, a field of its own. So yeah, but, definitely, but wouldn't definitely, computers, wouldn't were never that, powerful enough. Sorry, but no, wouldn't that no. Gareth though, like be, become smaller, like because of artificial intelligence and stuff, wouldn't that become an algorithm that could just be projected forward or or would you still need to have some creativity which the human the wet wear would be able to do well yeah no if i can jump in there like you know there's there's definitely uh you know more and more computing power available and able to do things that maybe people would have had to do in the past but then there's the interpreting those numbers and applying it to you know new products or new new uh industries and that sort of thing so i think there's always going to be a need for for someone who knows what the numbers mean and how to apply them and, and all that, being able to mine the right information and, and that sort of thing so I, it might uh, it might just mean roles change as opposed to disappear mm. yeah and so devon you always like i said you know like you you loved your your numbers and your schoolwork and stuff but there was also the fun dare I say, dorky side and uh, <laughs> a you know, person who, who like to have a laugh. But you also um, were quite like, I guess, artistic and you enjoyed your doodling. I don't know if you really remember. Yes, that. I couldn't believe you remembered that. Out. <laughs> it's like, it, like it comes back to me now. It was crazy. And then collecting stickers and all those sort of yeah, things. I and, remember that stuff. Eh? And like, yeah, the, all, the, all the weird arts and crafts used to, do during the holidays and that sort of thing but it's not something that actually stuck in my mind as, as thinking you know and then when you plan your career you're like you know it's, it's not something that really factored in you know you don't you don't uh, i don't think you sort of get pushed down a down a creative field of like well how are you gonna make money doing that it's kind of like you know find mm -hmm. a normal job and um that's something that's you know i'd forgotten about actually <laughs> until you brought it up hey eh? but now but, it kind of maybe it makes more sense in retrospect i don't know yeah for sure. It's, it's interesting fun. though, because I'm, I'm sure some, that has something to do with the schooling as well, you know, in some regard, you know, I guess sometimes people will be like, you know, there's an aptitude for that push that, but in, in that, that specific schooling system in Joburg back in the, whenever it was in the nineties, you know, that, that just wasn't a thing that was ever going to be pushed, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. I agree. No, totally. And like, it's not something that, again, it's not something I necessarily regret, but um, mm. it's funny now to think about, yeah. Uh, certainly and even like even later down the line i kind of pictured um you know i i was in res with some engineers and you know friends with them and the sort of the stuff they were doing i was like wow that sounds amazing and now if i see like a huge like building going up or something i imagine that's something that be like, that's something really actually i probably could have got involved in it sounds like so interesting <laughs> and it's like a project you know that you sort of 
it's like and i think that's what i enjoy about this work as well that i mean like with the photography is like you've got all these projects that you it's like little mini projects that you get to wrap off and, and sign up for, sign off on and feel good about so um so yeah i don't know i don't know how the the artistic side kind of disappeared for a while um i don't necessarily think i'm super artistic now really but uh, i still think i'm quite a technical guy but um, i'm sure it, i'm sure it helps a little bit to try and mm. try and do something creative in, once in a while but but yeah i mean i guess you can sort of argue like photography is is very artistic you know like it takes a very keen eye and you know sort of artistic mind to understand what to look for and some of the stuff that you're doing now in terms of photography that you're doing requires that so it's kind of seems like it's sort of been laid down for many years and manifested itself back up now which is which is cool well yeah i, I mean i still don't, like i was saying I, like, I don't really you know there's some guys out there and, and guys and, and like female and male photographers that are like mm -hmm. super you know they're, they're basically artists and um I don't necessarily consider myself an artist, you know, like I think I'm technically, I try to be quite proficient technically and understand the details. And like, you know, if I wanted to achieve something, how would I do that technically, you know, but there's, and then you've got the guys that are like literally just, I suppose they're playing around more and, and just kind of, you know, using photography more as an art expression. Whereas for me, I mean, it's a business and I want to, I want to make sure I can make enough money to, to get by on it. And, uh, so yeah, I don't like like I I don't necessarily feel like a, an expert on the on the artistic side of it at all. It's just something that I'd like to sort of explore more and play with. But um, you know, at the same time, you've got clients waiting and things to do. So <laughs> totally, but <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it depends how how much free time you have in your hands. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess it's a nice it's a nice intersection, isn't it, between between art and science that what you're doing and i guess it, it brings the both out a little bit which is kind of uh which is kind of cool yeah for sure and it is a nice uh it's sort of a happy happy medium that i've managed to find myself in but yeah, I, right. I think we i wanted to go back for a second to the, <laughs> the actuarial thing because i mean the actuarial the actuarial uh, process was like you know i think you mentioned it in the notes guys it's like it was it's such a hard slog that i think a lot of people when they get into it they're not sure what they're getting into and um we had a, i remember in first year you had people arriving like on the in the first week like goodness this is not for me and bailing then and then and then along the way people change their minds and they maybe follow different routes and then you finish your four year or three or four year degree and you've got these fellowship exams to do and it's it's such it's a very long hard slog and there's no there's no guaranteed results there's no pass mark you know it's not like well just get get 80 percent or 60 percent and you've got the you've got the you know that paper behind you it's always this like shifting goalpost which i think becomes mm -hmm. quite um quite a struggle once you've been hammering away at one paper for for years or something like that yeah uh, yeah hats off to the some of the guys would just keep like they just kept going and you know some of them got it some of them didn't um i i had my associateship and then i had one i had one exam left for fellowship and guys were like, oh, just keep just get it you know you're right there and but the reality is you can spend years trying to trying to pass that paper and maybe not ever get it or, or maybe you will but mm. um but in the meantime you know things had i'd been asking myself like is this really for me and is this what i want to do for the rest of my life and i think gareth would probably have borne the brunt of like quite a few <laughs> quite a few moans over the years like oh goodness you know going through this like you know it's reporting time and this is this is terrible <laughs> like what am i doing here and uh but I, I still i think i never i never planned the the move into photography it's something that kind of just kind of just popped up and even once it was a had started it was more of a hobby that i enjoyed and i was like oh cool i can make some money off this as well and then really you know things just barreled along and next thing i was like well this maybe it's something to try full time yeah that's cool man it's uh yeah it's it's really it's really inspiring what you've done Devin, and, and there's a lot of value in there um which we definitely will get onto in in a cool. sec uh, just in, a, a, another sort of big turning point in your life uh, i feel i don't know i mean you know it seemed like was actually going to university and that's where you met the lady of your dreams and it True. was uh, it was very early on, I think, in your you know in your university um, sort of time, and 
it was an interesting sort of courting, wasn't it? It took, yeah, it took longer than normal, <laughs> but it, of course it was well worth it. Yeah, I don't know what's normal, but uh, yeah, I'd, I don't know. I'd, I'd always known that I wanted to go down to UCT. I think once the option came up, like I wasn't really keen on, on the local option up here. Um, and UCT just, it was, it was a great move. I loved, I loved every minute. It was such a beautiful campus and, you know, Cape Town's just such a beautiful city. And uh, yeah, like you say, I spotted a, spotted this really attractive bird at, uh, at Vasti and tried, uh, it was basically for most of the first year to actually make an impression. And eight months later, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually managed to, to secure a date after uh, probably the, Probably the most embarrassing moment was one night up at uh, at the tennis club trying to you know convince her that I could try steal a kiss or something, and being uh, getting the cold shoulder and uh. getting all upset and turning around and walking straight into a telephone pole like no <laughs> <way>. <laughs> like so hard I grabbed onto the pole and I could steady myself for a second and yeah. like it didn't go unnoticed yeah so like luckily uh, luckily at the end of the year Meg's uh, Meg's decided maybe the soak was worth giving a chance. Yeah, so, that was, so she that felt was, sorry uh, for you, man. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. So yeah, that was the end of first year, and then and then we dated for dated for the whole of university, and moved. Oh, and it turned out we both um, grew up like goodness, like two kilometers from each other in Joburg, but just never obviously crossed paths. And um, and yeah, both both moved back here, and I suppose the rest is history. So yeah, got yeah, to wow. That's so cool, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we moved back back home, like to our respective homes, for a few months, but that luckily didn't last long. We were <laughs> we went after being away from home for four for four years. Uh, I think we we were keen to get our own place together, and, and yeah, moved in later that year after Varsity. So yeah, so awesome. Awesome. And, and she had a. You both had at this stage um, jobs waiting for you in Joburg, or um, yeah, actually. We, I'd actually done an interview down in Cape Town for a company that well, later became part of Deloitte and they were looking for someone in Cape Town. And um, we both kind of not, sometimes wonder like, why, why didn't we stay in Cape Town? It's so beautiful yeah. there. But, but, but yeah, I both moved back to Joburg and I started work at a company that became part of, part of Deloitte. And, um, and Meg, Meg started her, she, was, she did a, 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 her, got her first class degree in microbiology and honors, honors microbiology and um worked for a company up here and and uh yeah so we both did that for for years and years and and now she's also decided sort of slightly ahead of me that this wasn't quite right for her and also all that sort of mental like wrestling with yourself like what am i supposed to do with my life and, and you know is this or is this really what i want to do and and um she also had a, you know a few ideas she played around with and in the end decided you know she She'd done some teaching, I think, while she was still at high school and really enjoyed that and decided, look, this is actually something she wants to get into. So, yeah. And now did a one-year conversion as teaching high school, high school students at a, at a school up the road and, and loving it. And also, mm. like, I never thought teachers work as hard as this, but, I mean, the number of hours she's putting in is, is crazy too. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Yeah. Oh. I always find it so inspiring when people – try and or at least give it a go to go and work uh, for you know in something that they're very passionate about and especially you know you two guys like giving up two really well-paid comfortable roles that you're good at it uh, it takes a lot but also remember you know that you touched on it um for a long time you spoke about you know getting out of an act of being an actuary and wanting to go own your own wine farm or work on your own wine farm and I mean, what was it like? Did you ever feel that that was going to happen or did you think it was going to always remain a dream? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think we liked the idea. And uh, she's like, I can imagine how tough an industry that is to be in um, when you're at the mercy of the weather. I don't know if, but I don't know if I would have, um, if it would have been the best job for me. But I think the few years we spent in Cape Town kind of convinced us like, yeah, this is what we should be doing. We should go and we should go run a wine farm. <laughs> but so, yeah. But I, I suppose for a long, a lot of reasons, it just uh, just never happened, and probably a good thing that it didn't. But yeah, I, again, how Gareth remembers these things, I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, it was um, it was something we sort of liked liked the sound of, and uh, you know, we both we both actually did after university got back to Joburg and did some courses on you know wine tasting and different you know wines of the world and and that sort of thing, and 
and you know something that was a great hobby but not uh, not something that we ended up pursuing professionally so yeah so you have no regrets around that one <laughs> no no i don't think so like i suppose we, we can't really know but um yeah. never really, i don't know if it was a feasible option but <laughs> it was a nice dream <laughs> to have while it lasted i guess yeah for sure yeah for sure so you- so you ended up uh, getting over there, getting pretty like well-paying jobs. Everything was going pretty well in Joburg and that. And and then you guys got married, uh, is that right? And uh, and yes, and yes. And now you have, uh, and then you you had two kids and stuff. So tell us about you know that that journey with working hard, getting kids, and and were you just kind of cruising at that stage? I guess it is. I guess it is cruising. You know, or, or like in a good way and a bad way. I guess you kind of. Um, things become quite comfortable, I suppose. And like, like you say, we both, both our jobs were quite financially rewarding, I guess. Um, and Meg's, Meg's also got to travel quite a lot with her job. You know, she went to quite a few countries around the world for studies and meetings and that sort of thing. And I, I got to travel a bit as well, which is really cool. And, um, and then, yeah, kids, we had our daughter in 2010 and, you know, everything was quite textbook with her. It was quite easy. Um, and uh, I think then we didn't realize, like I suppose most people, like what the jump from one kid to two kids means. <laughs> there's no more, uh, mm-hmm. there's no more, ever, you know, you're constantly being tag teamed from one kid to the next. So, um, <laughs> and yeah, so we had our son in, in 2013. And even, but like, so from then, I think we were both kind of wondering what, what we should be doing and is this what we wanted to be doing? Um, but yeah, so I, I think for me, uh, actually maybe, having a having a, a baby girl kind of also kind of got my photography spark reignited and you know you're sort of taking photos all the time and and I think that might have you know been one of the key points in like deciding like you know is this something I want to do do more and more hmm. so yeah I don't know what else what was the other question <laughs> no, no, nothing. so so but I mean how difficult was this decision for you to go from you know, you're both, you know, both of you well-paid jobs to taking the plunge and going to work for yourself. Like it must've been pretty difficult. Yeah, I think, I mean, certainly, you know, from our point of view, you know, we both, well, we both agreed, like this is something we wanted to do and we were going to try. Um, and, you know, we, I suppose the plus side was we both had something we could fall back on if, if it didn't work out. Um, so kind of Megs took the leap first and did her conversion, um, her degree, and then started her teaching career. And um, I'd also, so I'd started kind of part-time in like 2014, and it was just kind of just a hobby. And I was, you know, you start doing some work, like some shoots for friends, and then word of mouth and social media and all of that just kind of kicked in and really helped things move from one thing to the next. And was just lucky to kind of get busier and busier. And then like I said, it wasn't ever really a, a plan to do it full time. It was just something I was enjoying as a hobby and kind of just r- rolling along with that. And from that was 2014, 2015, and then 20, 2016, I sort of, you know, things have become very busy and actually it became a bit of an impossible juggling act to try and fit everything in. Um, so I figured, well, look, I think, I think I can afford to like shift to a four day week. And luckily my company agreed to that. So I took a bit of a pay cut and uh, had Fridays, Fridays off, which turned out not to be off at all. Um, I just ended up booking more jobs and, and then, you know, thinking I was going to catch up on admin, but just actually taking on more work. So that was, yeah, that was 2016. And then in the meantime, Meg had, you know, done her conversion and started, started her work. And then 2017, I decided, look, if I, I wasn't ever going to try, and shoot weddings and do family photography. It would just, you know, it would mean I never saw the family at all. So that was, that was one of the key factors, um, just from a feasibility or, or practical point of view. And yeah, taking a bit of leap of faith and, and thinking I need to give myself a chance to just try this for a year. You know, let me try. If it doesn't work, I can go back to my, to my previous job if, or, you know, something similar, although the, the thought to that wasn't, wasn't very appealing. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that's, that was kind of the decision. I, I don't necessarily know that, you know, I, I had a feeling that, you know, I was making enough money to kind of hopefully get there. Um, 
but there was definitely kind of just a let me try and uh i had a bit of savings built up to i knew people who told me look so make sure you got some money to, <laughs> to see yourself through the first first year at least not six months make sure you got enough for a year and um and then at least you can you know give it your best shot and and that's that's what the sort of that was the main deciding factor like just to try it like let me let me try it and if it doesn't work out i can say i've done it i've tried you know yeah, yes. Important. Well done. It's an amazing, it's a massive thing really is. And, and well done for, for flipping doing it. Both of you. I mean, that's even more massive. It's that, that you both went through it together or almost together, but I, I'm still not quite understanding Devin, like what was the real drive for both of you to, you know, like, was it purely just a, a passion thing? Like you realized this is what I want to do for the rest of my life rather, or was it, um, yeah, like what, what is the real driving force underneath it all that made you both decide that what you were doing was wrong? And even though you've gone to hours that might still be pretty, you know, big hours and long hours and whatever, uh, what's made, what really made the, the difference for you to, to do it? Um, I think, I think look, speaking for myself, a lot of it was about, you know, A, knowing that I wasn't really you know, enjoying and like feeling like I could give my all to my, you know, nine to five job. It felt like this it really wasn't for me. It became very stressful and um, like, like obviously not, not managing to kill that last exam. And then, you know, just the sort of the nature of the work had changed, I guess. And it wasn't really for me. And, um, and meanwhile, this other sort of interest had, had sparked itself mm -hmm. and was going really well. And, and it was, something that I really, really was passionate about and, you know, devoted so much time to learning more about and perfecting and, you know, the opportunity to make that sort of a, a full-time option was, became more and more attractive. Um, and even if it wasn't a sure thing, it was something that I felt like, I guess like the, one of the overriding things was not wanting to like look back in a few years or whatever, how many years mm -hmm. and be like, goodness, I, I can't believe I stuck stuck there st sat in an office job for the rest of my life and never actually tried you know um it was just something that i felt i have to give myself the chance and i think the same can be said for me you know it was it was something that she knew she wasn't enjoying what she was doing she she knew that it was you know she while she also enjoyed working with you know certain certain people and colleagues and some aspects of the job some of it was just she just hated you know and and it was a lot of paperwork and, and admin and um, I suppose it wasn't fulfilling more than anything else. And mm. I think now that, now that she's found, I suppose her new calling, it, it makes that much more sense that it's, she's realized it's something that she's passionate about and, and she's making a difference, I guess. So it's, it's mm. that fulfillment factor and, and not wanting to also look back in 10 years down the line and be like, wow, I can't believe I just, wasted those years when I could have been doing something better with my life. Yeah, for Tell sure. Me about it, but, um, I'd like to get a bit more into the psychology sort of part of it, I guess, just now, but there's lots of people that are listening and in the sort of same place that you were a few years ago that are also wanting to make this move because I guess maybe they're frustrated and they're not uh, working in something that they're passionate about. They're not looking forward to it, et cetera what are kind of the practical steps that you took to get yourself in the position that you, you are now in? So like, you know, I'm talking about, you know, how did you become better at uh, photography? Um, did you have to go on certain courses? How did you plan for this financially, you know, et cetera, those sort of things. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a tough, a tough sort of, you know, it's like there's so many aspects to it, I guess. And I've, I have often thought back as to why or how I was lucky enough to to get where I was or, you know, have the, the sort of, what do you call, snowball effect that happened. Because um, I know a lot of people aren't in the same position and maybe, you know, have found themselves needing to go back to back to work if they tried the full-time photography thing. Um, so I think what some of the things that might have made the difference for me is that, you know, I had, I had always sort of carried around a camera as a kid, actually. I'd, I felt like it was something, but I'd obviously, like I said, it wasn't something I took very seriously. It was something that was fun. And then going through Varsity with one of those, I think we start when I was at Varsity, it was just all those disposable like film cameras. And then 
and then like the first digital cameras and and this was something that I'd, I'd, I'd even then just started like teaching myself a bit about the the technical aspects but a lot of this I mean the, anyone could kind of pick up a camera and learn that kind of stuff fairly quickly um, whether they went to a formal sort of education type approach or just something you know learning online um, so it's something I'd yeah I'd, I'd had some understanding of and then I taught myself a few technical details and that sort of thing and then I'd done some I did do some courses along the way with um, some really really top guys which was definitely helpful um, and I'd went to the one or two photography schools and did like some sort of small courses you know I didn't do like a whole A to Z of photography or something like that um, and then I think what what really helped me was yeah the, like social media kind of picked up and you know from this is now like what 2015 2014 2015 and having people kind of share your work and and you know the whole network of um people's friends and families just getting co positive responses and that sort of thing that all helped you know for like just get your name out there so as far as um people wanting to get into it i think there's so much you can learn online and but then again there's also like some great privately run workshops you can attend um and you've got to sort of see what works for you um but also what was i going to say i think what's also helped is like having having a bit of a business background i certainly i'm not the strongest when it comes to accounting but um having a bit of a business background i think from the word go i really knew that i didn't want to be like i mean there's so many people in the market i think wherever you are whichever city you know if you if you see these these online forums where people are like oh, i'm looking for a photographer for x y and z there'll be like two or three hundred responses that people can choose from you know and, and that's it's crazy how many people are out there so to be busy is really a blessing and and you know hopefully hopefully a sign that you're doing the right thing so i, I decided right near the beginning i didn't want to you know necessarily have the approach that oh well i'm just gonna i'll come in at like a low price point because i'm new and you know i want to make you know I'm, I'm not as good as that guy so i can't charge what they're charging whatever the case is i i really wanted to rather say well let me rather make sure i am as good or my, I feel my work deserves this or that rate and go from that approach. Um, so sort of set, stand, or, you know, put yourself apart. So you have to deliver something. Obviously, you have to deliver work that, that is uh, in keeping with what you're wanting to charge. But if you're going to go in like and offer, I suppose, everyone that wants a free shoot, a free shoot, or going to be like competing in the real like lower end of the market or the, even the middle range, there's just so many people there rather kind of set yourself up to uh charge appropriately for your work i think a lot of people are basically like paying their clients to do this shoot for them because they, they're so cheap you know um so yeah get your pricing right you have to you have to there's some great resources out there to help you set your pricing understand you know all the costs you need to cover all the the, the business side of it so i think a lot of people think well this looks like fun but there's you know you've got to be good at the business side and the, and the you know all the tips and tricks to kind of make a make a living out of it i feel like what you just said is so powerful and doesn't matter what industry you are going into as a newbie you must never undervalue yourself and i think so many people do that they're scared to charge uh what they probably think that they're worth so they go in and they sort of undercut themselves and yeah. what you, did you did you find that like a difficult decision to do um well i guess i guess it in the, in the beginning, it was a bit easier because it wasn't like at that stage, it wasn't something like I said, like I was, that I was seriously considering as a career. It was like, you know, I'm going to do this as a hobby. So I, I need to make it worthwhile. And, and uh, it was kind of like, if I want to buy a nicer camera, I better start charging or <laughs> try and mm -hmm. justify spending more money on gear. Um, and I think even at that stage, you kind of realized that there were a lot of people in, in the field and, and I, I, you know, it wasn't necessarily such a, Looking back, I was saying it was obviously a good decision to make that to start at a, a point that people thought, well, there's a, there's a horrible mindset, I guess, that people think, well, if, if that guy's cheaper than that guy, the, the guy that's charging more must be better. Um, and definitely a big thing. I mean, so social media has been a great help, but I think it's a big negative to some people is that in that they're constantly comparing themselves to like the other people out there. And so you, they definitely have a, you know, there's definitely a self-confidence issue with people thinking like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be as good as that guy or oh, I can't possibly, 
offer that or charge that or whatever the case is, um, there's a huge, um, I've, I've known of one or two amazing photographers that have basically taken themselves off Facebook or off social media entirely or have someone else running their social media, just, but not because of a time factor. It's actually just that they don't want to be there looking at other photographers' work and mm. feeling bad about their own work. That's sort of, you know, they're very, people can be very self-critical. And I think you've got to back yourself to, to a large degree. You've got to have faith in, in your work. I like what you said as well, that you, the way you looked at it in terms of making yourself good enough to be able to charge a certain amount. And, you know, you mentioned briefly uh, about, up, you know, upskilling yourself in, in a variety of ways. Um, do, you, do you feel like that's still an ongoing process that you always have to do? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, I mean, a lot of, I think, I suppose you've got to stop yourself from thinking, well, if I just get that, you know, get that piece of gear or attend that workshop, it's going to, you know, change, change me as a photographer. But at the same time, there might be something that you can add to your kits or, you know, learn some special techs or techniques or, or tips from someone that's, you know, been there, done that, made the mistakes. Um, and that will make a world of difference. So uh, there's, and it's totally this, you know, there's constantly a, a learning game trying to, you know, maybe introduce something that would again, just keep, keep you one step ahead or just improve the experience for your clients, I guess, and, and deliver something that like makes them go, wow, like that's amazing. Or, you know, whatever it is, just something, something that makes a better client's experience. I guess if your clients are happy, then mm-hmm. that's all that counts really. And we, we were speaking briefly the other day about, you know, just business in general and, you know, maybe other people were asking you for advice and stuff. And there's probably like a few things maybe you take for granted, don't you? Like in terms of how you operate, uh, what do you sort of think those are? And like, what, what could help people that are in this sort of same boat, like that are struggling to be like, how's this guy doing so well? Um, <laughs> uh, I think, I think you mentioned this in one of your, I think it was an article or a post the other day about, you know, time saving tips and how valuable your time is. Um, and so there's definitely some, there's some amazing tools out there for not just photographers, for any sort of professionals or creative photographer, or creative people, or, you know, whatever the case, whatever you're interested in, in terms of like invoicing software, like, you know, I think some people, apart from keeping your ducks in a row, or, you know, it also helps you appear more professional to your clients and, you know, things like, um, I remember getting involved with some uh, invoicing software and, and also getting, um, you know, like a professional, just a professional uh, impression for your clients. So have a proper website, have a proper email address, have a, you know, have a, have a Facebook page and the social media accounts and the, and that sort of thing. And, and, um, I think keeping things positive online, well, that's maybe a separate, a separate discussion, but then also, um, at some point, you may, you know, realizing that you can't do it all. So I, I eventually got to a point where I make use of an editor, um, who edits all my work and there's someone to do, take care of the bookkeeping and the accounts. Cause I just, you know, you can't get to all of it. And there are people that have the skills to do it for you. But, um, in the early days, just getting, making use of whatever tools are out there to uh, make your life easier and, and also at the while at the same time, you know, just uh, creating the impression that you know what you're doing and then, and obviously delivering on that. But um, you know, if, if your, if your clients aren't getting their quotes when they ask for them and then it looks like something you scribbled on a, on a piece mm-hmm. of paper, that's, that's not gonna, that's not gonna help. So there's so many great tools out there available online that, um, that you can make use of. And a lot of them are, are free or very cheap. So, there's no excuse really. Um, and then I think, I suppose at some point you do have to invest in, in some software or uh, hardware and hardware as well. That that's going to make your life easier. Like when I started out, I was, I, I was doing everything in Photoshop, um, not knowing any better really. And, and for those like in the know, like it's a very slow and time consuming thing compared to, compared to Lightroom, which is like, it's built for photographers to, you know, handle, sort of if you're doing lots of you know if you're doing like family work and and maternity and events where there's a lot like the the volume of photos is much higher than like a high-end fashion photographer you you need something that can process and and edit stuff a little bit more Mm -hmm. not automatically but um certainly speed up your workflow so having like a solid system in place like that really helped so 
and it's stuff that you know maybe people aren't aware of necessarily um but that's you need to kind of you need to research or speak to someone to get like you know not make those mistakes like <laughs> that i made in the beginning mm. uh, what I, i'd like to just hear some of the more like i don't know like the more human side of the, the skill set that you have as well like what do you what are some of the things you do to get a bunch of people to you know <laughs> pose for a picture well like I, I always think it must be really tough and you obviously you've got a few different um niches or areas that you work in but maybe just tell us a little bit about working with people and the challenges and and the cool things about that uh yeah look i think i don't know i've had one or two people tell me that like photography is something they want to get into but they want to do this sort of photography or that sort of photography because they're not you know, they're not great. They don't want to work with people. They're not great people, people like, you know, and I think that's, that's such a wrong attitude to have. Cause I think no matter what, no matter what genre of whether it's photo photography or any sort of, uh, you know, service business, you're going to be dealing with people 90% of the time. And so you have to be a nice person to, to work with, mm -hmm. I think in general. So, um, yeah, I suppose being patient with people and, and being, uh, what's the word? Like just, I suppose a nice person to to talk to. I mean, I'd, I end up like like this interview. I end up talking a lot and getting off track, and I'll be like waffling to myself during a shoot, and then, well, like also just getting excited, you know, and showing people like the photos as we go, like, oh, that's a great shot. Check it out. Mm -hmm. And and, and um, if they got, you know, having kids as well. I know my kids have, um, you know, half the time they want to take, push the buttons themselves, and so get, you know try to get people's kids involved. Like, come help me check, check this out. See if this is mm. set up. Like, yeah, if we push this, that's going to happen over there, you know, with the, with the flashes, whatever the case is. And I think that's, that's kind of help helps everyone enjoy the whole experience more. And, uh, you know, if, if, uh, obviously speaking about the family, family side of it now, if, if, if the kids are happy, then everyone's happy. <laughs> I think, I think a lot of people go into it like, Oh my God, I hope my kids behave themselves. Like they've got the bribery ready on this, like the chocolates or something. <laughs> like just let's let's just relax and, and have a good time you know let's not uh let's not start shouting and and uh make it a tense thing that doesn't need to be tense and i think often, even with the corporate side of things i've heard you know everyone's like oh my goodness i hate having my photo taken and um just talking to people the whole way through and and explaining what i'm doing or like you know don't worry about it i'm just checking this out of setting that up and i'll help you now and and then like i said i think engaging with people and, and showing them the results as we go has uh, has made a big difference and people are like oh that really wasn't so bad or oh that's you know it was much better than i thought it was going to be um is something that you know i hear quite often which is really really great to to get that feedback and and that uh you know so i don't i don't know how other people do it um but apparently apparently i'm doing the right thing hopefully <laughs> yeah for sure i think this is one of those things that you like you know you're probably not aware of but and you you, you don't take it for granted it's just because it's comes naturally to you and it's it's the most important thing i think the way you deal with people the way you communicate how well you treat them understanding them listening to their perspective making them feel comfortable it's just like it, that is in in terms of i guess in almost any business if you can form this sort of deep good relationship with somebody and be a nice person about it they're going to be like wow i just want to i just want to work with this person do you know what i mean yeah yeah exactly um and i think then also you know it's all fine and well if you're a great guy on the day uh or, or girl as it is but um and then but don't then deliver on on what you've said you're going to deliver on so you know it's always either what's the word um over what over delivering under under promising oh, over delivering yeah 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 exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so so making sure you you hand stuff over when you say when you said you were going to and and um you know i think I've often with a lot of my a lot of my shoots guys get like a little little print or, or a few prints to take home like on the day which i think's often been like oh, wow that's amazing how did you do that you know and and then uh you know following up with if you if there's some preview photos or that's whether it's the full set and you know in a few weeks or whatever whatever you said you're going to do make sure you do it and 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 do it well and and um yeah and when it comes to specifically for to, to photography i've it's something that like was instilled in me early on like you know if if something is out of focus or you know it's, it's just if it's not 
if it doesn't, you know, if it's not something you'd be proud to put out there, don't just include it because, oh, you know, it looks like it was, looks like something that they would enjoy or like, uh, I think it's just something that you have to reach a point where you're like, no, look, it's actually not good enough. And as sad as you, you feel about it, it's, you can't deliver that, you know, you have to make sure that you're putting out really, really good, good work. And you have to be able to do that repeatedly for each client. So, so yeah, that is also something that I was made aware of. <laughs> like, I think some people, this is, this is more wedding photography related, but you know, you someone might spend hours like making one photo from that wedding looked like just incredible, you know, but then, and then there'll be another one from another wedding and, and they've got a great portfolio, but what about the other 99 photos yeah. from the day or 600 photos from the day, you know, like, they, are they going to expect every single photo to look like that? Like you have to be realistic about what you're putting out there. Like, is it something that you can deliver for every client every time and not, uh, not only under those conditions or only after those hundreds of hours in Photoshop, you know, that was for me, that was my approach that I had to, you know, you had to make sure you could, whatever they saw, they could, they could expect for the, for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's, it's just have, it's just part of integrity and honesty. And like, like you were saying earlier, and I think it's really, that's why you're doing well, you know, is that you've, you've just said, this is what I can offer and you know, and, and you do deliver that. And I think that's also a massive les lesson to learn. And, and I think what, what I just saw you when you were talking about it, like you, you also getting a lot from this and it's, it's so cool to see because you, when you start talking about working with people like that, your face lights up and you, you really like, that's, that's what makes it fun for others. I'm sure is when you're having a good time too. And, uh, like you certainly, you can see yourself like lighting up with those things. So Tell us some more of the benefits of working for yourself. What are like, you know, like why should someone do this maybe? And, and what are some of the benefits you've seen? Um, yeah. So I think, you know, the big, the biggest, I suppose, um, satisfaction now is that it, so far it's working, you know, so far I've, I've not had to go back to a, <laughs> an office job yet. Um, but what, one and a half years down the line, um, which is really sort of really satisfying. And um, at the same time, you know, it's still very daunting. You, you know, it's, it still feels like goodness, you know, any, any time now something could go wrong and you know, the bookings won't come in. Or, so it is, it's, it's, it is nerve wracking and the hours have been, have been crazy at times. Um, they've been more hectic times than others, but I, it's still, I think something that, you know, if it's something you're passionate about and that you really enjoy it. It's, it's that cheesy saying that, you know, if you, if you're really passionate about it, it doesn't feel like work. You know, it's, it's, mm. it's just something that, and it, it, and that, that it in itself becomes a problem because the whole balance of work and life becomes a constant struggle. Um, you know, managing to actually keep some form of normal office hours to some degree and switch off at a, at, a, at an appropriate time is something that um, my wife will keep nagging me about. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it right. I really am. Cause it's, it's you know, you want to make sure you find time to go to the gym and, and uh, spend time with the family and, and all that, which is very important stuff. And it's just, you know, it's getting that balance right, which has been a, which has been a struggle, but, um, but working for yourself, you know, it, it does have its benefits and I, I work from home. Um, obviously, I, you know, most of my shoots are done at clients' premises or their, you know, or their homes or it's at a venue or whatever the case is. So, you know, I'm able, I'm home to take my son to school around the corner and fetch my daughter from school and take her to, you know, ballet and or gymnastics and dancing and whatever the case, whatever, whatever, depending on the day of the week, um, which is great. I wouldn't get to do that if I was, if I was back in the office. So that's been great. Um, and something that, you know, is, is a bonus. Um, and I think, you know, feeling like you are, feeling like you are not necessarily working for someone else and just like a nameless faceless part of a crowd of people mm. that's you know dispensable really at the end of the day um you know while while i worked in a really like really great companies the really great people i, I you know the reality is that if if you had to say well like um, like in my case you know if you if you leave they'll find someone to replace you so, <laughs> i know it's not a very nice thing to say but it's it's true like i think I think um, having your own business and knowing that all the time you put in is creating something that's yours is uh, something mm -hmm. that I, I, I value quite a lot. So um, that's definitely been a, a big win for me, but, but it's certainly not, uh, not a, an easy, 
you know, you're not going to work less. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, certainly a lot, a lot of late nights. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, like I don't, my idea before I also sort of started this thing was like, Oh yeah, it's going to be great. I can, you know, be much more flexible with my hours and, you know, maybe take a Friday off and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the reality is, is that it's, it's actually not like that at all. You're, you're definitely more flexible, I guess, because you can do those things. Um, but you're working probably most most days of the week, including the weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the the really cool thing that I think is is going to have such a huge impact on your kids is the fact that you can do these small things. You can take them to school. You can spend time at their extramurals. Like these mm-hmm. are things that you can't quantify. Do you know what I mean? But when it comes to deep human relationship and being a father and being a parent and being a child, these things are so important, especially in the long term, don't you reckon? Yeah, no, hundred percent agree. And, and, um, and, you know, while, um, while social media has been a great help in my business, it's, it's also something that, you know, I've got to get better. It's, you know, you've got to switch off from it and, Mm. uh, and spend the, spend that quality time with, with the family and all that. Um, so like, uh, there's definitely a work in progress (laughs) and, um, but, but it's, it's been great. And it's such a short, it's such a short window we have to, to sort of spend with our kids. I mean, you know, before we know it, they'll be in high school and, you know, the, the, they'll have their own, own, uh, you know, the sports that go into the evening and they don't want you there. And like, you know, it's that sort of, you know, while they're small, it's been great to kind of be more involved and, and, uh, see them that extra bit of extra bit, you know, and, and I get to fetch Matt from school and he, every day, like he charges at you and jumps into your arms. And so it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's been really cool. Um, and, uh, and I think it will, you know, however small, however small it feels now, it probably will make a big difference in their sort of, uh, I suppose, experience down the line. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that you know I've got to get to a point where, you know, hopefully you get to a point where you can actually, you know, define your hours even better and say, look, um, you know, I'm available on these times, these days, whatever it is, and and then I, I definitely don't feel like I've got all the answers. Um, like I've, I've got some, luckily some nice friends in the industry have been, you know, you're constantly second guessing yourself. Like, geez, am I doing this right? Or am I charging right for that? Or, you know, how would you do this? And, and there's people that luckily, like, you know, you can call on to, to help with those things. And, um, you know, hopefully that just gets you or gets me to a place where, you know, you've, you've managed to balance the, the work life and the family life just that little bit better, you know? Yeah. Mm. Definitely. I mean, geez, it was, I think people don't know, like, you know, they'll, they'll finish their careers and they'll never experience, you know, having their son run up, like you just said, you know, after school, like, and it's just, it, it is so, so powerful just that you've made this decision to, you know, not to benefit yourself, but I guess like also for your family. So is it, has there ever been a time where you've gone, flip i gotta go back to work or this is not working um luckily not luckily not um and like oh, i'm just it's really something that i'm i'm just so grateful for like to you know some months you're like geez you know i keep thinking well that you know last month i was lucky that this booking came in or that that job or but there's no guarantee like something like it's gonna happen the next month and then you know the next month passes and and you know stuff comes up and it's it's um i'm not i'm not huge into the wedding industry yet it's something i'm i'm hopefully going to grow and that but the benefit there is at least you're getting these bookings in advance whereas a lot of my work whether it's corporates or family or whatever it's a lot of it's kind of at the last minute so so that sort of thing is but it is nerve-wracking but i'm i'm really glad to have been busy and and uh yeah really grateful to have uh, made a success of it so far it feels like it's been a success anyway um, but, but occasionally I've been back to the office and, you know, to see someone or deliver, deliver something to, to, I've had one or two clients from the office for the old days and people are like, Oh, are you coming back? And I'm like, no, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just visiting. I really, I can't, I can't imagine going back. I can't, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is if this doesn't work out, but I'll have to, uh, I'll have to think of something. Cause like, yeah, I really can't, uh, I can't picture the, well, the alternative of going back to the office. Yeah. 
Oh, I can just imagine it. Well, you, it's really amazing and, and, and inspiring because I think so many people are listening to this right now thinking, should I, shouldn't I? And, and it's just it's so great to hear, you know. So, so what are your plans moving forward? What, where are you heading? What do you have planned for yourself, for your business and for your family, et cetera? Well, I think, um, you know, what, what I could never have planned, um, you know, when I, start, when I did start with the full-time thing and uh, you think, well, everyone's telling you, you know, just make some projections or try and, you know, forecast what's going to happen. And I really couldn't have, you know, it, was, it would have actually been impossible. It was just so, you know, a lot of the stuff was luck and a bit of, you know, being in the right place at the right time or meeting the right person or, you know, not being shy to say, hey, you know, do you need, you know, my services, here's my card or whatever the case was. Um, but I've luckily had whatever it was, whether, whether it was word of mouth or, um, you know, uh, happened to be a social media post. I've just had one thing lead to the next. Um, and at the moment, it's been really great to be involved in um, some, you know, some more corporate type work. Like I've been doing work for some restaurants and some uh, agencies and corporate work with some, some big agencies, which has been really cool. And there's some, there's some potential for future work there, which is really exciting. Um, in terms of you know bigger bigger projects that might come along um nothing's cast in stone yet but it also means that you know it's the kind of thing that keeps me busy in the week and hopefully means i can one day say look i you know i'm taking this weekend off or that weekend off or you know um so that's the kind of thing that even now it's like it's hard to say well it's definitely going to happen um you know and whether i should be trying to land more weddings i don't know <laughs> it's it's a hard it's a hard uh, it's a juggling act really so at the moment um, taking things as they come and um, definitely also you know investing in one or two one or two courses to to learn some new tricks and and uh, techniques that can hopefully you know take me take me to the next the next level and hopefully open up some new doors um mm. but then also just finding the time to practice those <laughs> techniques is like like Garrett says you know you think oh, i'll i'll you know i'll have a day off to try and then but meanwhile you know there's things to do and and uh, things to deliver and it just you need to try and take the time out to actually you know develop your develop your craft so hmm. so yeah i'm hoping hoping things uh continue as they have been and um you know trying to build on build on those relationships that are already there and and i think definitely to those people that are are you know thinking of doing something similar it's like you've got to i suppose not be shy and just and just talk to people and what have you got to lose? You know, off, you know, in terms of saying to someone like, you know, I can help you with that, or maybe, you know, we should chat about this, you know, just worst thing they can say is no. And then, oh, don't worry. I already use this guy. Like, okay, fine. But maybe, you know, as is the case with a lot of my jobs, I, I wasn't necessarily um, going to have any opportunity to get involved with them, but then the guy they're using or the person they're using is no longer available. And they, you know, you, maybe your name sticks in their head and you're the mm. person they call. So, so keep showing up. Eh? Yeah. yeah, keep showing up. <laughs> and, and Devin, what's your uh, support network like? And do you have like any mentors or anything? Um, mentors, I, I, no, I'd say no. <laughs> Not in the. I've got, like I said, I've got some some great people in the in the industry that you know, if you drop them an, an email or a message, or and you know, you just want some advice, like oh, I've got this this request that's come in, or am I, you know, am I am I pricing myself right? I want to make sure I'm not. Uh, not doing this incorrectly and they're happy to to lend a hand i think there's a growing movement to like photographers supporting each other and, and trying to help out you know if they can um as opposed to you know, keeping everything close to their chest like you know at the end of the day uh, some people are at least realizing that like you know you've got your clients and i've got my clients and uh, you know i'm not trying to steal your your work but you know we can all help each other if we you know it's, even if it's a pricing question you know and if, if we if guys are charging correctly at least it means that no one's like giving away their services for nothing and it helps mm -hmm. everyone at the end of the day but um support structures obviously been very important and obviously my wife bears the brunt of that <laughs> and uh you know it is there are some long hours involved and weekend time away and um so there's been a lot of uh support from from her and from and from then from our folks are around in in town as well and you know they'll have the kids stay over or or just visit so it's been great to have them close close by too but 
but I think uh, full credit would go to the missus for her for her support because um, that's yeah it's it's a lot of, it's a big it's a big ask so you know when she's finished a, a five day week to then like you know be a solo parent on some weekends it's been mm. it's, a, it's a big job you know but um, so the, the support's definitely here we've all, we've both got family up in Joburg which is which is really nice you know we've got you know we've got the kids niece nearby and my folks and my sisters around so yeah family's been been really important and it's just great that we all at least you know not far away from each other yeah for sure and just before we we finish off i mean firstly what you touched on there which is so important i guess is the communication side of things and for me like the most important thing in the entire world with doesn't matter what it is is communication you know like you just have to be honest with people um you have to be respectful in the way you communicate to them and then there's nothing to sort of ever worry about. As long as you kind of, you say what you think, you, you explain to people what is going on, then there's never a miscommunication or an understanding, you know, and it takes a lot to sort of find that honesty within you to, uh, to have like open, clear communication. Um, but it's something that we, most people kind of don't, are not doing, which is why there's so much, so many issues I think in the world is this lack of communication. But the, yeah. the, last thing like right you still love a little tipple you know and you still love your wine so what is uh what's your sort of favorite wine at the moment um you know do you have a favorite um or is it sort of yeah look i think i think coffee keeps me keeps me going most (laughs) (laughs) so yeah that's probably my favorite uh beverage of choice but um no we definitely we definitely enjoy our our wine our dinners dinners out when we get it the chance um Definitely could. Uh, if anyone's visiting the Cape, I could highly recommend a visit to uh, Waterkloof or Waterkloof, whatever you call it. We were there when we were last in Cape Town. It was just mind blowing. It was a, such an amazing wine estate, and their their techniques are all very organic, and and um, just all the wines are delicious. So yeah, if, if anyone wants a tip, I definitely recommend that. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, at the moment, it's you know it, the chance to actually just sit down and relax that's like friday nights is the is the time to do that and and uh we definitely you know it's wine and sushi night and and that's kind of whatever's available really i think we don't, <laughs> we, we've never managed to actually build up a cellar because the wine comes in and it got, you know it doesn't last long it's <laughs> before it's before it's uh down the hatch yeah so you know definitely something that we still enjoy a lot of cool. um, nice. yeah i was gonna i wanted to add something there quickly what was something i had along on the list here where is it uh, da, 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 da. I can't find it now. Uh, I was, I was, you were also asking about, um, you know, the next thing, um, what's, you know, on the horizon and uh, I, it's something I tried before and something that I think again about trying to find that balance and, um, you know, realizing that you can't do everything and, and, and at some point have to, outsource stuff so yeah that, that was the other thing i meant i was going to mention is that i I'd tried having a sort of a part-time pa which i thought was a bit ridiculous at the time but <laughs> and it didn't quite work out but it's something i probably have to have another stab at just to try and make this sustainable you know and, and to be able to you know say look I, I can't do it all let me get some help and hopefully that that would actually then pay for itself and that'll open up doors to explore you know new new techniques or just get my you know be able to shoot more and do less admin i think that's that's the one thing it's just at some point you've got to just hand some stuff over to someone else who knows how to do it <laughs> yeah it's it's such a big thing and we we've kind of learned that along the way and you know gareth and i have spoken about this a lot and it's it's just about finding the right person putting the time and effort into fi- you know vetting the right people yeah and then, yeah, being okay with um with with like you said handing some of it over and then and then refining once they are doing it you know so yeah. it's totally doable at the end of the day but uh it takes a bit of getting used to i guess yeah definitely and something that something that's kind of come along recently um i'm not doing a hell of a lot of it but i've had uh you know a few people say oh you know do i do workshops and all this sort of thing and it's not something that i i, I would say oh you know i'm a, like a professional workshop coach or you know ph- ph- photographic coach but um 
have had people ask about it and it's something I'm looking into, but it's not something that, um, you know, I don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm this great big expert that's got all the answers. So, but I, I have got one or two people that I'm sort of working with, um, on a, like a one-to-one -one basis to sort of help them get off, get off the ground and not make the same mistakes I did, which has actually been really great too. So, um, obviously it takes a lot of time and, you know, you have to charge properly for that too. So, not everyone's prepared to pay that but if, if it means you can get your business up and running that much quicker then um something that's worth considering so mm -hmm. so there's a lot of a lot of options open to you know for me and for those for people out there wanting to get into it you know, and don't be scared to ask for help and and you know make that investment to yeah. you know it certainly will save you time and <laughs> avoid a lot of mistakes that you could have uh, could have just sidestepped and and made your life that little, little bit easier yeah mm -hmm. for sure. i think it's very powerful like you know for guys like you to to put th together i don't know what it is ebooks or courses you know because there are people now that are in your position like that you were like a few years ago that like oh geez how do i do this where do i start and you kind of i think what happens is you almost forget some of the steps you took you know and uh yeah. it's those things that, that are worth documenting and putting down for people that that, that are in that phase now um so, so yeah, there's always the, that opportunity as well, you know, and uh, being a good teacher. I know you've taught me a few <laughs> things, that's for sure. Definitely when it comes to maths and stuff back in the day, <laughs> um, in, uh, when we used to do ad maths and stuff, I was like, yes, yeah, I was this guy, I know this stuff. <laughs> you were a great teacher, so you helped me out a lot in life. <laughs> and um, so, Devin, how do people get hold of you um, in terms of like social media and for business? and anything else like I, I try to be on as many platforms as possible but at the same time there's you know there's only so so many places you can be at once so people can find me on i'm on twitter and linkedin as just as devon lester um but then on social media on facebook and instagram and uh, my website is devon lester but facebook and instagram is devon lester photography um just all one word um so yeah, very easy to get hold of. Um, just Google me or <laughs> or look me up on one on one of those channels, and and uh, uh, happy to help where I can. Yeah, yeah that's so yeah, cool. Yes. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah, let me let me just start with with just saying my thank you briefly. Obviously, you and Gareth go way back, so just briefly, you know, thanks so much for for spending the time with us today. It's uh, I've certainly learned a lot about photography, number one, but also it's inspired me to take some changes that I'm looking to do in my life. You know, like there, there are risks, there are things that make you nervous. There are tough times, but like you say, you can always go back, you know, you can always go back to like what you were doing before, but do you want to do that for the rest of your life? And I'm certainly going to like try and appeal to my future self and a little bit and go like, you know, is this, this necessarily what I want to do for the rest of my life where I am right now? And maybe not, you know, and that's a, a really great question, question to ask yourself, you know, so, so thanks for that. And, uh, I appreciate, uh, all that you shared with us today and uh, so honestly and openly and yeah, wishing you just like super success uh, with everything. I, I can just see how, how you light up when you talk about the stuff you're into and then that's, what's going to keep you going. So, so keep it up, man. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's like still a bit surreal that I'm even on you. <laughs> but uh, it's like you see the past guest list, and it's like, are, are you are you sure, Gareth? Is this uh, <laughs> am I really someone that uh, you should be speaking to? But um, yeah, very very honoured to be here. Thanks, guys. No man, the, the, you know, Devin, the the whole the whole point of our show is doesn't matter what the person is and what they've achieved or who they are. It's literally about their story. You know, like we. We like to talk to the unsung heroes because at the end of the day, that's all of us. You know, there's maybe the 0.1% of people on this earth who have really been super successful and sort of stand out. But most of us are just kind of normal people, you know. So these are literally the, the most important stories are the stories about like your one. You know what I mean? Like we're all just kind of normal guys and girls. These are the stories that, that really do help people because they're like, oh yeah, I'm also, a, you know, I'm also an actuary or I'm also a banker or I'm also a nursing sister or whatever it is. And I have these dreams to do something that's more valuable and important to me in life. And like if, if Devin, if he can do it, you know, and his wife can do it, you know, Megan, like let's, 
then I can do it too, you know? So, so that's, what's really important, but so, you know, that's why, you know, everyone for us is just an amazing, amazing guest. And it's really been awesome for me just to, to chat to you and to have you on the show. Um, and I really just, I'm so proud of you, but as a buddy, like for, for what you've achieved in, in your life, you know, and making your dreams come true because I, you know, there was times when I remember you, you would come to London on business and would go and would have like a curry and you'd talk about, yes, I really want to change it. And I want to go do this. And I want to, you know, there was still the wine days and then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you've actioned it. And that's, what's so cool. And so many people never do that. So I just want to say as a friend, I'm super proud of you. I'm really happy for you. You know, you've always been, such a good person you know um and and such a good friend and and we didn't even go down that sort of side of things at all in this chat and but we we will of course you know hopefully in in future um episodes with you and there's those values which make you such a great person you know so um thank you for just being such a great guy and for sharing your story and for for telling us you know just giving us so much advice um on how to sort of quit your job successfully and to plan to quit your job. So uh, it was, it was just really, really fun chatting to you. I didn't just uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure again, I'm like, I said to you at the start, like I'm all over the place <laughs> when I start talking about these things. So I hope it was a little bit helpful to someone out there. And, uh, and yeah, thanks so much, my, my bad. And it was really, really great to sit and chat to you guys and, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully it was helpful to someone and, and it is nice to just, like you say, actually maybe sit and think back as to how you, how things panned out the way they did and how they might pan out going forward. But um, yeah, it uh, was a pleasure and really grateful to have been here. Thanks guys. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, bud. <laughs> Thanks awesome so much. Cool. <laughs> like a, cool. How did you enjoy that, bud? Yeah. Yes. It's what's <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, a, like it's said, daunting, you know, man. Like all over the place of a jar. No, don't but, worry, but seriously, like it's it is daunting, man. Like it's. Uh, no, but, Craig's like uh, learned so much about photography. I'm like, really? Did I say anything? I don't, like, I don't even know if I taught anyone anything about photography. <laughs> no, but like <laughs> but the, the like game business. of photography. You know, like yeah. for me, that that was helpful. You know, not the technical. Like, oh, let's go to the, you know, this frame, yeah, whatever. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think. But it was good, a man. Of, a lot of no, people, really good. Kind of, you know, they don't maybe view it as a business and i think the best the best guys out there are those that are like actually good people good people people and uh yeah but also have a good business brain you know it's mm. not not just um you know focusing purely on the artistic and that, side and that came across man that's that came across well and i think that's most people listening to this will that's what that's what will be resonating with them anyway like the technical side of it is one thing but it's just like don't forget to know your numbers. Don't forget yeah. to know what's going on in your business. Don't forget to be a good person. Don't forget to yeah. not bullshit your your people. Yeah. You know, those are the, those are like those are translatable skills into any industry, yeah. which is going to be valuable for our listeners. So you know, that's yeah. something I never we didn't chat about. But like, I, like despite my background, I'm so useless with accounts. Like, I literally, I'm like, keep telling my account, <laughs> like, can you actually just explain this in English? Oh, but, and like, uh, Gareth will know Brandon. Brandon's like. No, man, you must just do your own accounts because you'll have a good feeling for these things. I'm like, I don't have the time. Yeah. And I still probably wouldn't be able to make sense of it. Like, just tell me if I'm <laughs> making enough money, all right? So, like, yeah. like, so, like, so literally, I like the one, the one software I used to use, which I had to move off of. But, like, it would give you, like, a pie graph, you know, of, like, this is how much you made from this, and this is how much you made from this. And, like, like, that's all I want. Make me a photo. Make me a picture. That's yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> tell I'm me about it. Literally useless with, like, you know, someone uh, goes, you're, an, you're an actuary. Like, what do you think of the economy? I'm like, I have no clue. What's like <laughs> <laughs> immediately going full time meant that jobs that you couldn't have taken on before were now suddenly an option. That you know, you oh, are you available yeah. during the week? Sweet, like that's great. And then you know, you work with this agency and they refer you to these people and that person there. Like, oh, we need work done for this. So it was. It's literally just been like one thing to the next and you would never have known you could never have forecast that like there's, it's, it would have been impossible to like make a guess as to like this job arising or that job coming up and and That's i mean cool, like man. that that one the other day with um this big events company that actually happens to be owned by a friend of gareth's and mine's sister like it was this huge job that was just like three days worth of you know great pay and meeting great people and 
photographing the president of the country and stuff is just like, insane, like wow, you know, like we well, yeah, we never have never been able to predict that. So no, no, it's gonna sound so weird when I hear myself. Like, we no, hear no, chat? It's fine. But looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, awesome, man. <laughs> cool, man. Cool All right, stuff, man. Thanks. Nice to meet you, buddy. And uh, thanks. thanks for tonight. Have a good one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'll thanks, chat to you later, man. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, man. Have a good Cheers, one, man. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, 